talking about a couple big time key 2025 targets on today's show. Plus a little a little look back at Cole Accru. What did we think about him as a recruit coming out of high school? Where could he fit in at this level? All that and more on today's Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Really do appreciate you tuning in. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions do apply. All right, let's bring uh, Lockdown's recruiting insider, Brian Smith, on the show. Brian, it's been a couple weeks. I reached out to some people on the Discord, our Discord, questions for Brian. I said, dot, dot, dot. And that is basically the gist of this show. The first one is Tory Blaylock, 2025 uh, running back out of Texas, humble Texas. Great, great. Yeah, Power just, game, north, just north of Houston. That's a great area for football, brother. Four star player, 510 ish, 180 ish. Um, family connections to Wisconsin, offer from Wisconsin. What are the thoughts on Blaylock in his game? Number one, he plays at, at Atascacita, which is a program that's on the rise. They're competitive with everybody, and he's playing big boy football. So when you watch his film, and he makes somebody look dumb. It's probably somebody that's going to play college or at least has a chance. And he does it constantly. He can catch. He can run. He plays between the tackles. He can run outside and blow by guys. This is a big-time running back. Like Alabama will recruit this kid. If Wisconsin gets him, he's an impact guy. If Alabama gets him, he's an impact guy. He's what you're looking for. So if he has connections to Wisconsin, they need to capitalize. This is the same thing that you would always want. It just happens to be a kid from Houston now. So my first thought is, have they had him on campus yet? If they haven't, when are they? Uh, The second thing is they need to find a way to make him a priority for the entire staff because these are the kinds of guys that can carry off. Look at Wisconsin historically. Nobody in the last 25 years done better running back than the Badgers, at least not in my opinion. So he can carry on that tradition, but in a spread sense because he can catch the ball. Really nice athlete. If you wanted to play him at slot, you could. You want to play him at nickel corner, you could. Just a phenomenal athlete. And he's pretty strong for his size. He needs to add a little weight to be a Big Ten running back or a major power five, but he's, you know, he's a junior in high school right now. In two years, he's going to weigh 200 pounds, walking in the door. He's going to make an impact somewhere. Yep. And he's a guy who they have gotten on campus. Um, he, the, the fun thing with him, I was expecting the speed, right? Because the dad was a former running back. Uh, his older brother committed somewhere else. And then his another brother committed to Wisconsin as a safety trade on Blaylock. So there's the family connection. There you uh, go. I was expecting to turn on the film of Blaylock and see speed, but I thought the power for a younger back, it, it was, he, like you said, he runs between tackles. He'll run into people, throw the shoulder. I was impressed with just the ability to run between tackles for him. I was a little surprised by that as well. Part of that is where he's at. That's kind of the, the mentality. That's very old school football, but it's just done in a spread sense. They run a lot of gap in the same, some of the same things that Paul Chris did at Wisconsin out of the eye, but they just do it from the gun. And that's football in Texas. So just about everybody's in spread. I think that he, again, can play early, but it's not just because he's so athletic. You said it. I mean, he'll break tackles. If you do that, you can probably pass block a little quicker. Most freshman running backs suck at pass blocking. He'll be a kid that at least takes on that challenge. And again, he's a junior in high school. He has two years to get ready. By the time he crosses that finish line in high school and goes to college, going to be a lot bigger. There's no way I can't see him making an impact somewhere. We're going to continue on with a couple 25 prospects, but first the, the running back talking about Tory Blaylock, there's a reason I let up with running back. Um, we just got done watching Washington state, Wisconsin. I had a question from somebody. This is a, going to be a two-parter. I want to get your takes on, I know you watched a little bit of that. I want to get your kind of rough take on that, but I want to start here. I had somebody reach out and say, are the running backs going to get nervous watching this game in general, the running back recruits, I should say, uh, Dylan, Dylan, jo- uh, Dylan Jones, uh, Dupree in general, Do you find fans freak out more about losses than recruits do? Number one, a million percent. I mean, there's, there is no comparison. It's not even worth going into fan is short for what? Fanatic. No comment necessary. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what I thought. That's what I told, uh, I was having this conversation. I said, listen, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, but where is the point in your experience uh, as a guy following this very closely? Where's the point where recruits start to say, ah, that product on the field doesn't look that that good? Is there a, a point? That's a very valid question. 
The same thing that this staff at the University of Wisconsin is doing is the same thing Saban did and everybody else at every other school. Uh, for those of you that don't know, let me give you a few examples. Louisiana Monroe walked into Bryant-Denny Stadium in 2007 and beat Alabama. Let me repeat that. Louisiana Monroe, first year, almost always, there are exceptions if you've got a loaded roster and the coach takes over with the perfect setup like Urban, his first year at Ohio State, they had a mobile quarter. There are very rare exceptions like that. Most times you're going to suck. New system is, is disaster. There's no friendly. Look at Miami this year compared to last. That's a top 15 team. They were garbage last year. Mm-hmm. New systems, new everything. And it just, you know, now they've got some better coordinators, but it's helping. This staff, I'm telling you, is good. Are they going to be perfect off the bat? I think the game in Pullman tells you no, but it's probably more personnel than coaching. I love their staff, so I'm not real worried about it. My concern for Wisconsin fans is getting over expectations, which is like, trying to say you're going to get hit, hit by a bus and it's not going to hurt. Wisconsin fans are probably not going to like some of what they see this year. It's okay. Long-term, they'll be fine. Well, let's let's talk about that. You and I have talked long-term a couple times on this show. Um, I think we both like the the staff, Fickle, Longo, Trestle. Um, but let's talk, which because I know you watched some of the game Saturday, the, the Washington State, Wisconsin. Um, what are some things that you pulled out of that? What I expected. They don't have outside the numbers the players they need especially for Longo's schematics offensively, it's okay. But if you trade out even a third of one of the other major programs in the country, your wide receiver depth charts and flip it, the game is changed. It's just personnel. I know fan bases hate hearing that because it's a lot faster to switch coaches than personnel, but there ain't no shortcut here. This is a three to five year process to completely get it done. By the end of next year, you'll see it this year, whatever you get's a bonus. I, I picked Wisconsin to go eight and four, and I almost picked them to go seven and five because of this. They're going to lose a couple of games just because of systems and goof ups. And to that, something else. I knew the kid at Washington State, the quarterback, was a good good athlete. I didn't know he was that good an athlete. Like he did some things. I'm like, wow, how's that kid at Washington State? That's what Wisconsin needs. Mm-hmm. It's just bizarre. How does that kid end up there? That that is just crazy to me. That feels, it like what what a lot of, that feels like what a lot of fans maybe in, in Gainesville are asking and in other Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> Florida, you could, oof, oof, you that's could ride, you ride that dude out of uh, – anyway, uh, there's there's many schools. I don't mean to pick on Gainesville. There's several schools that could be asking that question. Um, Florida's the worst, though, man, for what they should be. They are, they are bad. Yeah, this there's a personal connection here on the Wisconsin podcast to Florida and that quarterback as well. And I actually wish Graham Mertz tons of success. I have nothing personal there, but you would – Again, let me ask you, pivot back to Wisconsin now, not to turn this into a Graham Mertz show. You mentioned a three to five year, like this is a three to five year process. You, you'll see more results next year, kind of paraphrasing what you just sure. said. Should it be a three to five year process with the transfer portal if you're bringing in a high caliber staff? Well, that's dependent. My thought process, and you, you'll answer this better than I, you follow the Badgers and you have forever. My experience, and this is from somebody that told me point blank, coached at Wisconsin, coached at Notre Dame, coached at a lot of places. He said it was harder for him to get kids into Wisconsin than it was Notre Dame. And I'm like, whoa, that's a problem. Are they doing it that way with transfers? Are they picky about transfers? Because if they are, it's a much slower process. And that was my guess. I don't have any insight into that. I'm just projecting. Are they taking a bunch? And can they, if they want, without admissions, freaking out? What? And I certainly would never ask for a name, but like what time frame are you talking when you were able to have this conversation? About 10, 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah, it's it's certainly Wisconsin that we've seen it where recruits have high school recruits have not been able to get into Wisconsin and ac- because of academics and have gone to another Big Ten school. So it's not yeah. like they couldn't get to Wisconsin. They went to uh Mac school. They like we've seen it happen. Now there's a other there are other Big Ten schools that have similar academic standards. That's not across the board. You know, Wisconsin is one of several schools in the Big Ten that have pretty high standards, but it's an interesting point. All right, I want to come up. We have a couple more 2025 prospects I really want to ping you on. Uh, You talked about some edge guys, getting some some more talent on the edges. There's a couple I want to ask you about specifically in this 25 class. That's coming up with Brian Smith on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. A quick break to talk about our game changer of the week, James Thompson Jr., one and a half sacks, five tackles. He was a game record defensively and really stepping up on that defense line. Uh, much like James Thompson, Athletic Brewing has changed 
the game, the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. They're, they're, they taste great. There's variety, over 50 different styles of craft, non-alcoholic beers. And I love IPAs, so that checks the box for me. But there's golden, sours. They're constantly releasing limited edition experimental styles to add to the variety. And the favorite part about athletic brewing, fit for all times. Um, on the podcast with Brian Smith, I could be having – uh, an athletic brewing company a IPA on the, the lawnmower heading somewhere else uh, before a game, after a game, no hangovers ever. And you still can get the good taste of that IPA you're used to. You can find athletic brewing companies, non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First time customers use code locked on to get 15% off your first online order. That's code locked on at checkout. 15% off at athleticbrewing.com near beer exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company fit for all times. All right, let's get Brian back on. Continue uh, talking some some twenty five kids here, Brian. I want to start with we we talk about it. Got to get corners. Um, six foot one corner out of Wisconsin, Trey Poteet, a high three star kid, already building up a strong offer list. What were your thoughts on Poteet watching his game? Number one, he's a kid that's just naturally limber and athletic. He could play whatever sport. It wouldn't make much difference. And the first thing that I thought about him in re relation to Wisconsin, what are we going to do when you look at the state of Wisconsin each year, say top 10 prospects? Four of them will be offensive linemen, a couple of D tackles or offensive tackles. And then from there, it's kind of iffy. How often do you see a kid that can play corner like this kid within the Badger State? You can't miss on this kid. He, in my opinion, he, a kid that can play at Texas, Alabama, Ohio State, whatever, you have to find a way to get him. Can play corner, free safety, or receiver, doesn't matter. And he's over six foot. He's the guy on the outside that Wisconsin rarely gets and like never gets in state because they just don't don't have those opportunities. Got to sign this kid. And you and I talked before the show a little bit about the unique family dynamic here, right? Obviously, his dad was the cornerbacks coach under Paul Chris. Paul Chris was let go. Um, none of Paul Chris's assistants were retained. It's it. And the first thing you said, well, they're not going to get him then, right? However, yeah. this relationship has continued to kind of grow and blossom. That would be, in your opinion, um, a, a major coup for the staff to be able to overcome that personal development. I just don't know of many situations where that works out. I, I have some personal history with that, and the dads usually are pretty angry about it. And, and uh, it's just things that I've experienced personally, talking to people around it, been, been through it directly, et cetera. But every family's different. If the kid just wanted to go to Wisconsin because he grew up around it, maybe he doesn't care. Maybe he didn't like Paul Christ. I don't know. But at the same time, his dad's now at Iowa State. And not many kids want to go to Iowa State. If his dad was at Georgia, I'd be real confident he wasn't going to Wisconsin. But he's, he's at Iowa State. And that coach has been rumored for about every freaking job under the sun, too. So it's a wild deal. And he's a junior. So that's just one to keep an eye on. But assuming that his dad doesn't go to some other school like Ohio State or Texas don't nab him, I, I'd expect this to be a little bit easier for Wisconsin. It's easier to beat Iowa State than it is the Longhorns for a recruit. Yeah. So, But uh, as long as he stays in the state and stays at that high school or at least one of them, then you're, you're going to have him around people that are pro-Wisconsin. If he leaves the state for any reason for high school, for whatever reason, then their opportunity diminishes. What style of corner do you see? Is he a guy that you think could play in a man? Because this is where this is the other part of this. This is where Tressel and Fickle want to head towards. They want to play more man. Um, is he the type of cornerback that would fit into that type of scheme? I think he can. I mean, cover three is ideal for the long rangey kids because then you just play break on the ball and they don't have to get there because their length takes care of the last foot. It's like ridiculous how long some of these kids are. But I think he could. The competition here's the problem watching his film. The competition he's going against, it's not the same as where I live or in Texas or something. I need to see him go against an elite power five receiver. I haven't seen it yet. And until he just straight up plays bump coverage in that, I have no idea. But the way he moves tells me yes. And he's the son of a college football coach. Mm -hmm. What are the chances of him not being polished? Yeah. I mean, there's there's a few kids playing college right now, I won't go into specifics. But I know that their dads literally, even while they're at school, are coaching them on the phone on things. And these are guys that got paid. Now, they may be getting major power five coaching, but when your dad got paid to play, you should probably listen to him. His dad's a coach at a power five school. Was it Wisconsin? 
he's going to be a little bit better than most kids come in the door. So I like my odds. Let me ask you this really quick segue because I find that last part fascinating. Do you think that drives the coaching staff's nuts that their players are on the phone with their dad getting coaching? Or 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 do you think they like that? I, I'm very curious. Depends on the person involved on both ends. There are a lot of college coaches that are incredibly thin-skinned. One hundred, I like Saban admitted at one point, if I didn't have 100% control of something, I couldn't be a part of it. And I'm like, ooh, that's sickness. And he's loosened up as he's gotten older and he's in his early 70s. But it depends. If it's a coach that's worried about losing his job, he just doesn't like anybody poking around. So if it's a competent coaching staff, they don't care. Mm, interesting. All right, let's shift to another edge player here that somebody asked about. Um Going to the receiver side, we have uh, Cameron Flowers, 5'11", maybe 6', I think 5'11", receiver out of West Bloomfield, Michigan, kind of close up to uh, Ann Arbor. Again, pretty good offer list already going. Wisconsin's offered. What do you like about Cam Flowers watching him on film? Uh, he can run. <laughs> He's the kind of kid that I see here, here in Florida. He's a track kid. One of the first things when you watch his huddle film is it goes into it, 10'6 speed. I'm like, okay, well, then you have to take him. Yeah, you know, I mean, Florida would take him. Texas, would, anybody would take this kid. You just got to figure out where he's going to play. He made people look really dumb on film. There were, you know, there were times he had to slow down for his blockers to a point. It was like, he's like, just get out of the way. So kickoff nightmare. He's a guy that if he gets the ball outside the numbers, you better be head up with him real quick because you're, he's going to juke you. He doesn't get up to speed immediately. He's more of a, a 100, 200 meter guy. He's not necessarily sudden, sudden, but that second gear is ridiculous. And again, he's a junior. He's going to get faster. He's going to get stronger. I don't know what spot he's going to play uh, with that speed. He's going to get like the coaches will fight over it and try to figure it out. I'm not sure, but I mean, the first thing I think for Wisconsin is they need home run hitters. I would play him at flanker, but the DB coach is going to be like, well, we need corners too. So either way you win and lose if he goes to Wisconsin because he's, he's just a great athlete. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the position actually. So it's, it's cool that you brought it up. But th the other thing I wanted to point out, and you hit on it, like the speed just jumps off. The, and there's some, oh, there's some players ridiculous. you watch film of and – you don't even need to have ever watched football just to say, well, that guy's faster than everybody. There's a clip yeah, where he's not hard. <laughs> uh, he runs like five angles on a play. It, it's oh, unbelievable. It's, yeah. It's, I kind of felt bad for some of the kids he's playing because the greater Detroit to Ann Arbor area is okay. But like Detroit itself is really good football. And then once you get outside of it, it, it can go sideways real quick. And he's in that area and he just makes people look dumb. Well, really? let me ask you then. You, you brought up uh, positions, cornerbacks. People will fight over them. I tend to agree with you. I, I would, I would, I would think that they would lean offense. Does he have the the quick? My question was, does he have kind of the quick burst feet? You said getting up to speed quickly, acceleration. Um, that I feel like the the elite corners have that. I didn't see it, but he's always playing offense on the right. film, really. So I don't know. I'd want to see him in person. He would be fun to see from field level. Like that stuff's different. When I go to a game, like a college game, and I'm on the field, you know, you, you can see guys on the field. It, it's one thing, but, like, I was at the Miami-Texas A&M game last weekend, and James Williams walked by me. Like, I knew James was big. He's a legit 6'5", and see him from three feet away, that's different. I want to see kids like this play against other guys that have similar traits mm -hmm. and see what that's like. It's important to know. And then how does he compete afterwards? Does he go 100% if he gets smoked? I mean, you're going to lose reps when you go against elite competition. And right now he's killing people. I need to see him go against somebody maybe in seven on seven. Maybe he plays with sound mind, sound body. It's the big seven on seven program in Detroit. And I see him in Florida this next year. I don't know, but that's the way I would be able to tell. Cause I didn't see the suddenness necessarily for corner, but he was patterning everything he did on making one big cutback. And then once he took that step, he didn't even do anything else. Nobody going to catch him. Right, it was lights out. Yeah, I mean, in Florida, every now and then he might get caught, but even in Florida, he ain't gonna get caught very often. That dude is fast. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's that jumps off the film. I agree. Oh, All right, okay. so we're gonna talk about Cole LaCrue. Uh, something that we haven't really had a chance to pick Brian's brain on because he kind of came on after that point. So we're gonna talk about Cole LaCrue next and what he thought of Cole coming out of high school. Uh, that's coming up next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show um, over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. FanDuel, this is the best time. NFL season is is just gotten started. My Niners look great. Uh, once again, I'll have a futures bet on them to win the Super Bowl. NBA's coming up. Baseball playoffs. 
uh, college football. You can still get into great futures with the Badgers. The Badgers with uh, Georgia Southern line is up to 19.5 on um, FanDuel. It opened at 16 and a half. So this is a great time to get started with FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $5. or If you bet $5, you get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube, YouTube TV. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you do not want to miss. All right, let's get Brian back on. Uh, and continue just talking about uh, Cole. Let's do Cole or Crew. I shouldn't say continue because we haven't really done that yet. Um, Brian, one of the people that you, we, you and I didn't get a chance to talk about, one of the players is Cole or Crew, who to me was a really interesting recruit. I Full disclosure, I had him on the show a couple times. I liked him before Wisconsin offered. I liked the arm, the mobility. Very curious what you thought of Cole Cruz game. He reminds me of the kind of kid that has been, and I'm not using this school because they have a certain quarterback with the Chiefs, but that Texas Tech has had forever, minus the kid with the Chiefs. That's obviously a little different. But Tech has taken a lot of system guys and done well. This kid has more mobility and just natural agility. One of the first plays on his highlight film, if, if you remember it, he rolls left, does everything wrong, and throws a dime. The most important trait that any quarterback will ever possess is accuracy. It doesn't matter the this, this scheme, the year. Uh, Bobby Knight was asked one time, what's the most important thing for a basketball player? The ability to put the ball in the bucket. It's the same. If you score, it just that's, that's it. There, there's no, you know, a forest for the trees. So I think there's a lot to say for him just being accurate. And he did a lot of things off platform. You hear that from quarterback coaches, ESPN, Fox, whatever network you're watching to talk about making those throws. His offensive line wasn't exactly stellar. So he's running for his life half the time, ducking guys, keeping his head up and looking down the field to survey the landscape and then picking out a target and connecting. That's a yay or nay. Some kids, once they get flushed, eyes are down and they're ready to go in the fetal position. I don't care how strong your arm is. You got to go. This kid is a competitor. He'll run read option. He'll run quarterback draws. He is a modern day quarterback. This is not the tallest kid, but I would not be surprised, especially with what Longo does. He could fit the system and he'll at least be competitive. So it's great to have guys like this on your roster because he's going to compete because I'm sure he's been told, oh, you're too small. You're too the. He's the kind of guy that's a gym rat and won't care. I guarantee it. I love those kind of kids. Yeah, it's funny. Um, it comes across when talking to him. Like he has, he has confidence on top of confidence. Like his, his, I mean, he's all locked in on that. And I, and good you know, for him. It, it, the other thing, too, with LaCrue that's interesting, and you mentioned it, um, maybe not the greatest collection of talent around him. I don't want to put anybody, but he they want to stay title with LaCrue. Like he, yeah. there's there's an intangible aspect to seeing quarterback, especially a quarterback at the high school level, win a state title. Do you make the accurate and most important clutch throw in the big game? That's another checkbox. There are certain guys you hear, well, he's not having a great year this year, but you listen to some NFL show or whatever. But when he gets to the playoffs, you know, like Roethlisberger was kind of that way. He would go through stretches in the regular season. You're like, ah, you might be done, but then they would be in the AFC title game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like certain guys just get better in big moments. This kid might have a little bit of that. I'm not saying he's been Roethlisberger, but at the same time, I saw him make throws under duress on the run against his own body, like going left and he's a right-handed quarterback. That's as hard as it gets. Why shouldn't you think he could do something, especially in Longo's offense, which is really balanced out of the spread, and that's what this kid's familiar with. It's a good fit. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's interesting because he's a guy that – he was a Paul Chris recruit initially, and then Jim mm -hmm. Leonard stayed on him when Paul Chris left, and then Phil Longo and this new staff stayed on him after Jim Leonard left. But then they brought in Nick Evers from Oklahoma and Braden Locke from Old Miss, and they've got Mabry Metoyer next year, who we've talked about a lot from Texas. And it just feels like LaCrue has gotten lost in that mix a little bit of these transfers that play, you know, fans are really excited about. Oh, you, you get all, I just, I think there's something there with LaCrue. And I don't know if he's going to be the guy or not, right? You have to stack talent at the quarterback position and Longo will find the best one. But I don't think he's someone to sleep on. Evers is a kid that I loved out of high school. I saw him in Elite 11 and stuff, but you just don't know how kids are going to take to the playbook. So when you mentioned stack talent, that's at any position. 
but there will not be at Wisconsin or any other school a position that goes through more attrition than quarterback. Why? There's only one guy that plays, and kids have zero patience. Mm-hmm. Out of those three kids you just mentioned, two will probably leave in some, you know, it's just just the way it is. You know, if you're lucky, you keep two and not one. So quarterback is violent, man. You just got to take a great player every year. and Whatever happens, happens. I think that's the way to do it. Uh, he is Brian Smith, Lockdowns Recruiting Insider. Great insight as always, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on Wisconsin. We're going to talk again tomorrow. Talk about uh, keys to the game, Georgia Southern, and why you can't overlook this Georgia Southern team. We're going to talk about that tomorrow on Locked On Badgers.